Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk, and today I am going to talk about Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. This is a very highly anticipated book for me. Like, really highly anticipated. And truth be told, when I bought it, I never read the back. I, did, I purposely didn't read the back beforehand because I said, you know what? I don't want to be spoiled, but now that I read the back after, I'm just like, okay, don't worry, it won't spoil you. So with that being said, if you really want no ounce of spoiling and almost a little bit of misleading, go ahead and read the back. If you want something that's, I'm not going to spoil you by any means, I'm still going to do a non-spoiler section, but I'm going to give you more of a specific idea. So Tate moves in with her brother Corbin. Corbin is a, I almost called him a flighter, flighter's not a thing. And her brother is a pilot and it's like in this whole complex and a lot of other piloty people also live there along with his friend Miles. And let me just say that Tate and Miles' initial introduction, it is the furthest thing from graceful. Tate is very, very dedicated to her job. She's a nurse, by the way. And as I mentioned before, Miles is a pilot and he's like putting in overtime like nobody's business. So they're both very dedicated to their work, which is also a reason why neither of them a reason, not the reason, a reason that neither of them have really been in a relationship in a while. And kind of like the book says, they do stumble into this no strings attached kind of agreement. But it's not at all how the back of the book really makes it seem. It's not this story where, oh, they agree to, you know, this no strings attached relationship and then, you know, they fall in love with each other but they don't want to say that, oh, I actually do like you and it's not just this, you know, friends with benefits type of relationship. So they don't even want the friend thing. It's no strings attached in the most unattached way. Miles is a very secretive character. So much so that it actually kind of annoyed the piss out of me. But you do get answers, you just you tease with little bits because this book is broken into like Miles perspective, Tate perspective, but then when it's the Miles perspective it's always like the past perspective so it kind of goes along all these timelines and I think it worked well. I liked that it was consistently every other chapter because I don't know it made more sense. I've happened upon books where it's present, 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 past for five more chapters and it just it threw me because I don't always read books in one sitting, so I tried to make this one last, I didn't read it in one sitting, so I felt like it was done well where you could like draw out the reading process and it would still work and you wouldn't be confused. Now this next part, I wouldn't say it's a spoiler, but if you're kind of like me and you don't want to know anything going into the book, I definitely wouldn't listen to this, so I would go away like right now if you don't want to hear it. But this isn't necessarily a spoiler, but it's something that I also want to include in the first portion of kind of the synopsis of it all, so again, Go away if you don't want anything, but I'm not really spoiling. It's just, you have to be one of those people, okay? I hope that made sense or it didn't, I don't know. I read reviews where a character trait of Tate is weakness, and I don't necessarily disagree with that, but I don't find it this big bad thing that made me not like her as a character. In fact, I did like her. I didn't love her to death like I loved Cap to death. I'm not, I will get on that, I'm sure. I will talk about him for a few minutes, but back to Tate. I found her weakness to be very human. While I appreciate like the very strong-minded, very super independent female, I love reading that, but it's, I don't know, characters are supposed to be like people, and not all people are like that, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing or a good thing, it's just your personality. I feel like certain characters can be bashed just because they don't have this kind of personality trait that you would want in a character because you have that trait. I found something refreshing about that and it, it reminded me of Cinna from Mudvayne by Taryn Fisher that a lot of people bashed Cinna's character but you know what? She was one of my favorite characters because she's so flawed and she has a lot of character traits that people don't like but the thing is Tate really doesn't have anything that is not really unlikable because I understood her and I think that's what I really appreciate about it and why I didn't have the same issues that a couple other people have. I haven't read very many reviews that were like on the fence or negative or anything like that but I just thought I would put that out there. It's because I understood her, didn't necessarily agree with her, but because I understood her that I really like absorbed and accepted that character trait of hers. So now the spoilery spoilers where I, I talk about Miles is past, so big spoilers, really don't watch this if you plan on reading it, it'll kind of ruin it for you. So if you haven't read this but you have read some of Colleen Hoover's other books, I have every book that she wrote, I was gonna say I have a lot, but I have every book she wrote, I have a review on, and I will link all of those down there in the description. 
Like, I, I mean, all of them. The whole Slam series, all of the hopeless books, and just, I have everything. Okay, go check down there. Spoiler, spoiler, spoilers, go away if you don't want to know. So, with Rachel. Chronology now, guys. First chapter with Cap and the whole birthmark being, like, the way that you died in a past life. I love that to death. I love Cap so much and I really really love his whole tie-in. Honestly if he wasn't even tied in with Miles's past I still would have been like nope he's very important to me in this book but it really solidified his the necessity of his presence. See I had a way to say that. <laughs> when I was making notes I had like this whole uh, the airborne toxic event joke and I'm totally just gonna read straight from my phone which I never do because that bothers me when eye contact isn't made but that's why it's so stupid and no one's gonna laugh but I think it's funny I'm gonna get joy from this so I wrote that I'm not really sold with Miles at this point in the story uh, it was right after he kissed Tate at the thanks after before during yeah during the Thanksgiving but then sometime around midnight wink wink um uh, the airborne toxic event song title I'm stupid okay continuing I'm hilarious do you guys ever do that just think you're no one okay no one thinks you're fine Hannah. so sometime around midnight um they both go into the kitchen and they start talking about love and sex no not the movie love and sex like actually love and sex great movie though i think i've talked to you guys about it so during the whole love and sex conversation <laughs> the proposition is made not okay let's let's explain why i'm laughing at this because <laughs> i've had that proposition thrown at me once before and it was the most awkward date of my life and that's probably all I'm ever going to say about this. Anyway, so that hit me in that I just started hysterically laughing because it wasn't that long ago. Oh god. I said no. I had to say that. People are gonna- sorry grandma. I'm not a bad girl. Oh god. I just need to stop. Anyway, I wouldn't have been flattered. Um, I wasn't, personally, but it probably helped that this guy was, I don't know, she knew a little bit more about him instead of being on a date for two hours and then not being asked. Yeah, it was fun. I wasn't really on board with Tate at this point, and I was kind of like, oh, okay. But then she had this little part, which was super important. Maybe if it starts out this way, it'll eventually end up being something more. Very short, very simple, made her a hell of a lot more likable for the beginning of the book, which I think is really important. There were a couple really simple and beautifully put paragraphs that reminded me of lyrics or poetry, which are, you know, kind of one of the same, but I'm gonna read them. Sometimes not speaking says more than all the words in the world. Sometimes my silence is saying, I don't know how to speak to you. I don't know what you're thinking. Talk to me. Tell me everything you've ever said. All the words. Start from your very first one. That is so, I just loved it. That's probably one of my favorites in the entire, entire book, which is saying something. I think it might be. Jury's out. We'll find out when the review's finished. <laughs> if I said that again, because then you know me and decisive. I really loved the superhero bit and then how I have to read it. It was the moment in which I said, okay, yes, I'm hooked. The story is bueno. I just have been watching way too much Breaking Bad and I feel the need to speak Spanish all the time. I can't speak any actually. Just, just about um, bueno, coffee, and help. That's about it. So the superhero bit. So Tate asks Corbin, remember when we were kids and we wished our superpower could be to fly? Yeah, I remember, Corbin says. You have your superpower now. You can fly. Yeah, he says. I guess that makes me a superhero. And then she asks, what's it like watching the sun rise from up in the air? Corbin shrugs. I don't really look at it. I'm too busy working when I'm up there. This makes me sad. Don't take it for granted, Corbin, she thinks. I look, Miles says. He's staring out the window and his voice is so quiet I almost don't hear it. Every time I'm up there, I watch it. You bend the laws of the universe when you fly, I say. It's impressive, defying gravity, watching sunrises and sunsets from other places Mother Nature didn't intend you to watch them from. You really are superheroes when you think about it. You save lives, Miles says to me. That's way more impressive. My heart absorbs those words on impact. Rule number two is not looking good from back here. The chills on the whole you say, I don't know, I just loved it. It's so small and this itty bitty little detail and it's one that I feel like I'd remember from this book months and months from now and I have a really bad memory. So Cap, I've gushed about him a little bit, a little bit, but this man, 
he had some really great pieces of advice. And now that we kind of know that he's known Miles, it makes more sense why the advice was very specific. But I really, really liked his part in it, and I loved the advice. So Cap says, I suppose if a man lived through the ugliest side of love, he might never want to experience it again. And then he goes on to say, Sometimes a man's spirit just ain't strong enough to withstand the ghosts from his past. Maybe that boy just lost his spirit somewhere along the way. The ever insightful Cap, and I love him. <sighs> Miles bothered me. What's the right way to say this? I think going out of this story, I understand Miles as a character now after we finally got like that whole backstory about the lake and Rachel and Clayton and everything. Like I understand him now. But I, I didn't fall in love with this guy like I do with other characters. I actually fell in love with the 80 year old man. Is that weird? That's a little weird. He had, again, a lot of issues. And then because of the Rachel chapters, they're not even Rachel chapters. What are they called? Just the Miles back then chapters. They then tied in and didn't really excuse, which I did appreciate, um, excuse his actions for what he just did that upset you know, us as the readers, and it, of course, upset Tate. It wasn't explained to us, but it really wasn't in a this excuses his actions kind of way. It's just like this dip into why he behaves like he does. But man, can that boy apologize? Mm hmm. I don't know what that voice was. This is my favorite funny part from the story. I feel like it's again one that's gonna stick with me because I laughed so hard. I'm pretty sure I was in public when I was reading this, and it was just to the wind. I didn't care. I continued laughing like a hysteric, hysterical, a hysterical hyena. <laughs> so he's trying to rip off her panties and totally failing at it. And Tate said, your failed attempt at being sexy actually made you sexy. My failures are a turn on for you. Oh yeah, so hot. And he said, you would have loved me from the ages of 13 to 16. He says, I failed at pretty much everything, especially football. Now we're talking. <laughs> Tell me more. Baseball, he says right before he presses his mouth to my neck, he kisses his way up to my ear. And one semester of world geography, so hot, I moan. <laughs> now that's hot. It was just really funny and it gave a little backstory into who he was, kind of post, post, pre, pre-lake. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. So another place where Tate's actions are explained. This happened often. I wasn't smothered with it. It was very gingerly put but eloquently put when it was said. Just not like how I'm talking right now, right? And it goes, As much as I know I'm too far gone to continue treating this as casual sex, and also too far gone to stop it, I'm terrified to lose him for good. So I sold myself short and take what I can from him, even though I know I deserve better. Because it's the only reason that she has continued doing this with him is because she is hoping for change, and I guess that's very naive of her to expect change out of a person. When you just, you shouldn't go into a relationship in general expecting this person to then change and then things will be fine because it just, it won't work out. But that was her reason. And while I don't think it's the smartest thing, I understand that about her. When Tate finally blew up at him, oh man, loved this. She made excellent arguing, arguing. <laughs> That's a word. She made excellent points in her argument. They were spot on. I love that she finally said it. I have been waiting for her to say it. And then that's the place when he just breaks. And this was also the point where it was about one in the morning and I had to finish reading. Yep, that happened. I feel like the ending did come on a bit fast. It was nicely wrapped up. I knew it would end happily so I didn't have too many worries. And then there was this part where Ian just said this brilliant paragraph. And Ian said that, what if someone came to you and said, what if I could take it all away? All of the bad stuff, all of the hurt and the pain, but it would also take away all the good stuff. The first time that you held your son, all the moments with Rachel, every I love you, every kiss, every everything. And would you do it? And then Miles kind of answered this non-answer of maybe, but then Ian went on to say, I guarantee you if I asked you a few months ago, you easily would have said yes. So Tate has really made that kind of difference in your life. And I felt like that was really important because I feel like Tate wasn't really so much of the Miles chapters because they were past chapters. So I felt like that was just a really uh, significant bit for his chapters. The gun ho arm. All right. I didn't ball like I did with Slammed. I mean, that just, it got me so bad. 
but I definitely felt for these characters, and I cannot even put myself in their shoes. Oh my god, what was I think Cap when he was talking to Miles, and he said something like, no one understands your pain, only you and Rachel will be able to understand that pain. And it was just this constant ache, and it was the way that he described it, and I wish I made a note of where I was, but I think I was just so flipping pages quickly. But it was just this really beautifully painful uh, description that really gave some kind of an idea to it. I really, really liked this book. I think Slam still holds that number one spot for me. It was my first book of Colleen Hoover's that I read, and it really hit me. And it's the poetry aspect of that that I felt worked so well in Slammed. I think if I hadn't read how well it was done in Slammed, I would have loved this more, but I feel like Slammed is just on this pedestal to me. So I just, I compared them just because that aspect was in there and I tried so hard not to, but still, Slammed is my number one. But I want to know you guys' thoughts on this book. If you're going to spoil, be sure to like, do like 10 asterisks or something and alert people that your comment holds spoilers. Just let's be kind. So again, you should check out some of my other reviews for Colleen Hoover's books. I have Maybe Someday, I have Hopeless, Losing Hope, Finding Cinderella, Point of Retreat, Slammed, and This Girl. I think that's all of them, right? Damn, that's a lot of books. So you should definitely check those out, and I will see you guys later next time on Bookworm Stock. Bye.